I absolutely love the Coke and Mentos experiment. Take a few Mentos candies, place them into a Coke or similar carbonated beverage, and a beautiful foamy geyser jets out of the bottle. I have performed this experiment thousands of times, and every time I try it, I seem to learn something new. For example, I once tried this experiment at a friend's house who lived at high elevation in Colorado. I noticed that the fountain produced went much higher than I was used to seeing. Because air pressure decreases with increasing elevation, this made me wonder if the decreased pressure at higher elevations made the Coke and Mentos experiment work better. I mentioned to my friend and fellow chemistry teacher, Ryan Johnson, that I had observed the Coke and Mentos experiment to work better in Colorado than in Michigan where I lived. We discussed that air pressure might be a factor. To test this idea, we decided to try the Coke and Mentos experiment both in Michigan and in Colorado. Even better, Ryan decided to climb to the top of Pikes Peak and set off the Coke and Mentos experiment in 1,000 foot increments all the way to the top. Here's the way we prepared for the tests. I purchased two six packs of Diet Coke. I removed one bottle from each six pack and stored the bottles in Michigan. I mailed the other ten bottles to Ryan in Colorado. We devised the following system to test how well the experiment was working. We took a two liter soda bottle with graduated volume markings on it and attached it to a bottle of Diet Coke. We used a PVC pipe to consistently add the Mentos candy to the Diet Coke, and we could read how much foam was produced on the graduations on the 2 liter soda bottle. Let's watch Ryan as he conducts this experiment at higher and higher elevations up Pikes Peak and compare that to the experiment done at lower elevation. I wanted to give a baseline here in Manitou. Um, the elevation here is about 6,800 feet. I'll get a uh, accurate elevation in just a moment. All right, Get the apparatus set up. Diet Coke, Mentos. All right, let's do it. Diet Coke fizzing nicely, stopped right at about 1,050 milliliters of bubbles produced. All right, good morning. I'm just at about 7,000 feet in elevation uh, on Bar Trail now, off of Intamin Trail, where I kind of skirted the, the uh, foothills to get on the trail. Uh, but let's do this thing. All right, interesting. It was just below 900, so there was around a 150 milliliter drop from last time. All right, hello from 8,000 feet in elevation. Uh, it's beautiful sunrise coming up over the inversion layer and ready to do my next trial. All right, the fizz only went to 800 milliliters this time. Um, I have to admit, I was kind of expecting it to increase as I went up in elevation uh, due to lack of air pressure or decreasing air pressure as I went up, but so far it doesn't seem to be following that trend, so. All right, I read about 9,000 feet. Um, just checking all my setup, everything seems to be going really well. All right, let's do this thing. Oh yeah. All right, topped out at 1200 milliliters of fizz. Hello again, 10,000 feet, it's a big one. All right. Hmm, a little bit of a drop. I was about 
1,025 milliliters. All right. Hello from 11,000 feet. All right. Here goes. Try 11,000 feet. Oh, yeah. Just above 1,450. I'd even hazard to say it's close to 1,475. All right, welcome to 12,000 feet. All right, Mentos in. You're cooking up there. <laughs> hey? Little science. Okay, so uh, 1,200 milliliters, 1,200 milliliters. So a drop from last time. We're at 13,000 feet. Um, it's pretty warm now, the sun decided to kind of come out for 13,000, which is nice. Only about uh, 1,100 more feet to go, so almost there. All right, let's do it. Temperature outside is a little cooler, but the temperature of the Coke is pretty stable. All right. Woo. Stopped at almost exactly 1,500 milliliters, 1,500. Very cool. All right, 14,000 feet just below the summit. Last one before the top. Let's take Here we go. All right, highest yet. Got all the way up to 1,700 milliliters, 1,700 milliliters. Pretty good. Hi, right, welcome to the summit. 14,115, although my altimeter says a little bit different. All right, so it was at 1,700 milliliters at 14,000. So let's see if it's any different. Ready? A little lower, uh, 15, excuse me, 1,700 before, now it's 1,500. It might be a function of the colder temperature of the Coke. Uh, relatively steady. Thanks for watching. This has been fun. Bye. From the same six pack. I'm here in Spring Arbor, Michigan, and I'm going to test these here. Spring Arbor, Michigan is at an elevation of about 1,000 feet. One. Folks, that's kind of interesting. I'm seeing about 650 mils foam volume. All right, control number two. Nice and tight. Second control, 1,000 feet elevation. Here we go. That one's looking like about 650 milliliters as well. It was pretty clear that the experiment done at 1,000 feet produced less foam than the experiments done near the top of the mountain, which consistently produced at or above 1,500 milliliters of foam volume. Now let's take some time to look at the data collected at all elevations. We'll plot foam volume versus altitude. There's the point collected at 1,000 feet, the point from the beginning of the climb, and a bunch of other foam volumes collected all the way up the mountain. While the data do seem to jump around a little bit, it's pretty clear that when we look at all of the data, foam volume increases with altitude. 